Hello, we will continue with module 0, focusing on the topic of vector algebra. In this topic, we will review the most common operations needed in physics with vectors, ranging from the magnitude of a vector to the scalar triple product. We will begin with some preliminary notations and conventions that will be required. First, we are going to need the so-called Maxwell's rule, a convention, an arbitrary relationship between the direction of rotation and the direction of advance. In this video, we have the direction of rotation in red and the direction of advance in green. When the direction of rotation is inverted, the direction of advance is inverted. It is an arbitrary relationship. It could have been the other way around, but it is the one that has been chosen. This arbitrary relationship that you are seeing here is represented by a screw. As you can see, it does not matter whether it is on one side or the other. It is known by this name, screw rule. Other common names are corkscrew rule, Corkscrew fulfills the same relationship between rotation and advance or the right hand rule that you see here in which the palm of the hand plays the role of rotation, the direction of rotation and the thumb plays the part of the advance direction. It is clear that the rule of the left hand is not useful as you can see by the symmetry of the human body it would indicate just the opposite criterion. As for the reference systems we also have to say as a preliminary step that they can be categorized into two large groups, considering that we have an orthonormal reference system. Basically, that the three coordinate axes are perpendicular to each other. All can be separated into two subsets. The one we see above meets the following criterion. That rotating from the x-axis to the y-axis, the direction provided by Maxwell's rule coincides precisely with the z-axis. Those that meet this rule are known as direct, dextrorotatory, or right-handed systems. From now on, we will simply say direct. If we turn from the x-axis to the y-axis, the direction that Maxwell's rule gives us is the opposite of the z-axis. Those that are like this one receive the name of inverse systems, levorotatory or left-handed. In reality, we will always obtain results on both sides from the infinite that there are, half would be direct and half would be inverse. So the reason that we will give later in terms of the vector product here in physics, we will always need to use direct reference systems. The way to determine that we are using direct systems is to make that check, that rotating from x to y, Maxwell's rule gives me just the direction of z. With vector operations, we start with the modulus of a vector, that is basically how long it is, and given a vector from its components a sub x, a sub y, and a sub z, in either of the two usual notations generally used, the modulus is the square root of the addition of the squares of the components. Then, to represent a modulus, we will put either the vector with its arrow with two dashes on the sides, as we see in the central part here, or directly the vector with the same name of the vector, but without the arrow above, which also represents modulus. As for the addition of vectors, by definition, it consists of applying the parallelogram rule, given two vectors, a parallelogram is completed with its corresponding parallels and the vector that goes from the common origin to the opposite end is, by definition, the sum of those vectors. A second way to visualize this is to put the vectors in sequence, putting the end of one next to the origin of the other. And the vector that goes from the origin of the first one to the end of the last one would be the addition. You can see in the graphical representation that both vectors are exactly equal. The analytical way to do that operation is to add the components x with x y with y, z with z. As for the subtraction of vectors, it is like arithmetic, just as 7 minus 3 is 7 plus the opposite of 3. With vectors, it is the same. If we want to subtract a minus b, we take the subtrahend vector b, we take its opposite, which is simply the same vector, same modulus, same direction, but opposite sense. And we add a with minus b, so this red vector would be the subtraction of both vectors. An alternative way to do it is representing the two vectors with a common origin and taking a vector that would go from the end of the subtrahend to the end of the minuend. We can also check that it follows the same rules of verification as any subtraction, just as we know that 7 minus 3 is 4, because 4 plus 3 is 7. We can see that the vector b plus a minus b gives us a again. The analytical way to do this operation we have here is to subtract the components, x component of the minuend minus a of the subtrahend, the same with the y component and with the z component. As a third operation, we are going to talk about the scalar product of a number and a vector, multiplying a vector by a number m, 
consists of multiplying each of the components by that same number. What that represents is what we are seeing here in examples in red color. We see the vector 2a, the vector 1.5a, and the vector minus 0.5a. So we can make clear that the sense coincides only if we multiply by a positive number. When we multiply by negative, the sense is inverted. As fourth operation, we are going to talk about the scalar product of vectors. As I say, two vectors are multiplied, and the product is a scalar, hence the name, that is a number, not a vector. By definition, the scalar product of two vectors is the modulus of the first vector, times the modulus of the second vector, times the cosine of the angle they form between them. The notation is putting here a point to distinguish from other types of products that we will see later. This is the definition, but it is not the formula that is usually used to calculate it, because normally it lacks a key data, that is that we do not know the angle. To imagine any two vectors in the space to begin to think what angle is the one that there is between them. However, for this reason, the following analytical expression is used. It can be demonstrated that this property is fulfilled. The scalar product of two vectors coincides with the product of their components in the x direction, in the y direction, and in the z direction, and the sum of these three products. Notice once again that it is giving as a result a number, a scalar, not a vector. Unlike what happens with the vector product, which, as its name indicates, results in a vector. Like all vectors, the definition has to tell me what modulus it has, what direction it has, what sense it has. Going step by step, first will be the notation. You would put that cross in the middle to distinguish it from the scalar. And as far as modulus, by definition, is the modulus of the first vector times the modulus of the second vector times the sine of the angle that they form, which can be shown to coincide exactly with the area of the parallelogram that they form, the area that we see there in blue. We should clarify that it is not true that the area is equal to the vector product. The area is equal to the modulus of the vector product. The area is a scalar. The complete vector product is a vector whose direction is perpendicular to the multiplied vectors, it has to be perpendicular to A and B, which means, you say in other words, that it is perpendicular to the plane that A and B form. In this example, the plane formed by A and B is the plane of the screen itself. So the perpendicular direction would be perpendicular to the screen. Here it is represented obliquely because we are trying to represent a cavalier perspective. It would be necessary to define if the direction is towards the inside of the screen or towards the outside of the screen. Both possibilities exist. Well, the direction by definition corresponds to the application of Maxwell's rule to the rotation of the first of the vectors to the second rotation of A to B. In this example, to turn from A to B would be the sense that you see there in green color and the opening of the corkscrew screw of the right hand would lead us to that. The sense is towards inside of the screen for which we already have defined the vector A by B. I take this opportunity to emphasize that the vector B by A would be the opposite because it would be necessary to turn from B to A by the shortest way. And in that case, according to Maxwell's rule, the vector would go towards outside of the screen. This is the analytical expression because performing the previous calculations with numbers is not feasible. So this is the way to obtain the vector product. It is by solving this determinant with the first row with the unit vectors and J, K. The second one with the components of the first vector and the third with the components of the second. I want to emphasize, because this is important, although I will not go into more detail, that this formula is only fulfilled in direct reference systems, systematically. If you apply this formula, this expression to an inverse reference system, the vector that always comes out is just the opposite of what it really is. It would always come out just the opposite. We have to be careful that whenever there is a vector product involved in any mathematical operation or in any physical problem, we have to be using a direct reference system. The last operation that we are going to see here is the mixed product given three vectors. By definition, the mixed product is the scalar product of the first one by the vector product of the other two. The vector product gives me a vector B by C. It is a vector, in this case, that I can scale or multiply by A, and the result is finally a number. You can check that the way to obtain it is with the determinant that you see there, where we have three rows. Each one of the rows corresponds to the components of one of the vectors. You can also check that the number that comes out in absolute value corresponds to the volume of the parallelly piped, defined by the three vectors. I say the modulus of the product that comes out, because if the mixed product gives 7, it means that the volume is 7. If the mixed product gives minus 7, it means that the volume is 7. To conclude, 
Here we have a summary of all the operations that we have been discussing for your reference. And this is the end of the lesson. Thank you very much.